Hi, it's Alaska Granny. Do you ever look over your prepper pantry food stockpile and you wonder, how much food do I really need? How much is enough? If we look at just the very basic foods, which would be beans and rice, there are guidelines of how much you should store for say one person per year. And the guidelines begin with grains. They don't necessarily say rice, they say grains. The amount of grains that you should store per person per year is 400 pounds. Now that may sound like a ridiculous amount. It sounds like who on earth could eat all that? But if you didn't have a lot of other foods to eat, probably that is what you would need. I've also read that when you're planning on your food storage stockpile, you should add an additional 10% just because sometimes foods get spilled, packages get broken, things get wasted and having that built-in buffer zone can help make sure that you don't run out in the most critical times. We also need to realize that a typical person needs approximately 2,000 calories per day. Now of course depending on what size you are and how active you are that will vary but we're just using those as guidelines. Now, if you think about 400 pounds of grains, don't just think that means one kind of grain. It doesn't just mean rice. It doesn't just mean wheat. You need to think about all of the different types of grains that there are that you could have in your food stockpile. One of the things we realize is that we need a variety. We want to have different types of nutrition come from different ingredients. We also want to avoid food fatigue. Nobody wants to eat the same thing over and over again. Don't try to stockpile your 400 pounds all in one shopping trip. No one is able to accomplish that and so you want to think about the foods that you want and every time you go to the store add a package. Pick up one thing that you can add to your stockpile. If you can add more than one that's great. You'll add to your stockpile, you'll have more food, it'll build up faster. But if you can only get one, just get one. The way I look at it, every package of food that I set aside now is an additional meal that I can provide for myself and my family sometime in the future. Okay, let's look over what are some of the varieties that we can get. Of course, we know we can get white rice. White rice is going to last forever. Just like other grains and dried foods, you want to store it in an airtight container. You can put them in jars, you can put them in clean containers that were food grade that you cleaned out yourself. You can vacuum seal them, you can use oxygen absorbers, you can add a bay leaf. The most important thing is that you put it in an airtight container and you seal it as well as possible. And you always want to store your foods in containers that only held food. Brown rice is also a fine grain to have in your stockpile, but it's not going to last anywhere near as long as white rice. Brown rice has natural oils in it and the oils become rancid. So yes, you can have brown rice, but you want to make sure that you rotate it within a few years. It's not going to last for 30 years. And the last thing you want to happen is in a real emergency, you go to your food stockpile and it's spoiled and it's no longer edible and that could bring a huge catastrophe when you think you've prepared and realize that you made some critical mistakes. Oatmeal is also a great food that can last for many years and you don't even have to cook oatmeal. You can soak it overnight, make overnight oats and then you'll be able to eat it. Another variety of grains that I like to store are pastas and macaronis. I do the same thing. I put them into airtight containers. But remember, it doesn't have to just be a jar just because I'm showing you jars. You can store them in mylar bags. You can add oxygen absorbers. You can store them in five gallon buckets. There are lots of different ways. There's no one right way to store your food. There are many ways to do it. You want to choose containers that fit into your pantry and the sizes that fit into your lifestyle. Lots of people don't want to open up a 50 pound bucket and then they feel like they must eat their way through to the bottom of it and that's not logical or sensible that you would do that unless you have a huge family. So if you have a smaller family or you live alone, it's perfectly fine to store foods in smaller containers and then it's so much easier to rotate it because you can grab one of your jars from your stockpile, you can use that food, then you can buy more, refill it and put it in the back. Push the older food forward just like they do in the store first day 
first in, first out, and then you add the newest food to the back so that you're always consuming your food while it's still fresh and the foods with the longest shelf life will be there when you need them. After pasta and macaroni, do you ever use barley? Maybe you like grits. There are different kinds of grains that you can look at that maybe they aren't as popular, but you want to check them out and add them to your food stockpile. I also choose to store quinoa because it's a very delicious and nutritious grain. You can even pick up packages of quinoa at the Dollar Tree and it is a very nice, almost a nutty flavor and it's a great way to pick up a small package, try something you haven't used before and see if it's something you want to add into your stockpile. If you like Mexican food, maybe you want to try your hand at making corn tortillas. Pick up some masa flour, but I haven't stored this appropriately. It needs to get into an airtight container, just like the other grains, so it's going to last longer. Now, when you pick up a food like this, when you're still in the store, look around on the seams, look around on the shelves, make sure you don't see anything that looks like weevils that would already have contaminated the food. Those weevils, exists naturally in grain products so you want to check it out before you bring it home. You don't want to bring home an infected package and have it go swarming through all of the food in your stockpile. And that's one of the reasons you want it airtight. That bugs can't live in an airtight container and they can't then spread into other foods. Occasionally you also want to inspect the shelves in your pantry and make sure that you don't have any kind of pests that have come to uh, invade your territory. Did you realize popcorn is a grain? I've had trouble with actual cornmeal that has gotten bugs in my pantry and that is really the only grain that I've had a huge problem with. So I will store popcorn but if I do buy cornmeal that's something that I like to rotate far more frequently than other grains. You can also add grains to your prepper pantry stockpile with the foods that are already sealed to last a long, long time. You can buy foods from the LDS Church. I choose to buy foods like flour, wheat, and oatmeal. They come in a box with six cans. I also like to pick up the foods from Augustine Farms because they're very good, high-quality foods, and I like them. But remember, when you have other ingredients mixed in, these are all single ingredients. They're going to last the longest, but when you get something like a pancake mix, it has other ingredients in it, and so the, it's only going to last for 10 years. It probably would last longer, but be aware that whenever you buy a combined food item, it can't last as long as these other just single ingredients. It's just the way it works. If you look over all of the different kind of grains and think about the varieties that you might want to add to your prepper pantry food stockpile, the ways you might use them, pick them up one package at a time and before you know it, you'll be well on your way to having the amount of foods that you want. In addition to your grains in your stockpile, you also want to have beans because when you put together your beans and rice, you're getting a complete nutrition. And those are foods that are eaten all over the world. They've kept populations alive for centuries. The amount of beans that you would need for one person for one year would be 60 pounds. Now you still can do the same thing. You can store your beans into jars, you can put them in mylar bags, you can put them into buckets, and the better you seal the beans, the better and longer they're going to last. Then you can also just pick them up one bag at a time. And there's so many different varieties. You can get red beans. Think about split peas and lentils. There's all different kinds of beans, and the sad thing is they used to be uh, like a dollar a pound. You could easily find them for a dollar a pound, and I just don't find that to be true anymore. They're nearly always higher than that, but that's okay. You can still get a bag at a time, one pound at a time. Something to think about is beans require a lot of water and a lot of cooking, so I also have a large supply of canned beans. The way you want to figure it out is one pound of beans is equal to about three and a half half cans of already prepared beans. So if you're trying to figure out how does that equal 60 pounds, we'll just put like one pound plus three cans, that's two pounds. And then you're on your way to having beans that you can use today if you need to, or in the future when you have time to maybe soak them 
or cook them in your crock pot or cook them all day on your stove. The one bean I try not to store in my stockpile as a dry bean is kidney beans. Kidney beans have some kind of an enzyme or something that's in them that actually contains toxins that you absolutely must soak and cook your kidney beans up for longer than other beans. So if you want to have kidney beans, do what I do. Store them in a can or pay attention when you're cooking them so that you realize that you make sure you get them completely done. I also like to include uh, lentils and split peas because these don't have to take anywhere near as long to cook. You can cook these in an hour. And I love to fill up my crock pot with beans. I don't soak them ahead of time. I cook them low and slow for a long time and I just find they're so simple to use as long as you have time. It's not that you can come home after a busy day and get some of your dried beans and have them for dinner. They're not going to be ready unless you have lentils or split peas. But you can start the day ahead or start in the morning with a little bit of planning. You can have those dried beans for your meal. Otherwise, reach into your pantry and grab a few cans of beans and go ahead. They're so versatile. You can make all kinds of recipes with beans. So those are just the two most basic foods that could really see you through that are a wonderful way to stockpile and add up into the foods that you have on hand. But remember, you should also have a wide variety of everyday foods in your pantry that you can mix in or add to your beans and rice so that you get more nutrition, more variety, and uh, more filling meals that you enjoy. In the summertime, you also have the ability to grow some food and add to your stockpile. And even in the winter, you could do some sprouting of your beans and peas and seeds and things. And then you can have additional fresh food. Because that's part of being a prepper, is figuring out how to be self-sufficient. How can I add variety? How can I add longevity? How can I continue to have food going forward if I have to only rely on myself? So it's a big responsibility to be a prepper, but you don't have to go like overwhelmed with how much there is to do. You just start where you are, add a package, add a can, add some food, get something and put it away the best you can and then look over ways to use your food that you do have and then rotate it so that you will continue to have more. Prepping is lifestyle insurance. It ensures that we have the food and the things that we need no matter what the day brings. And that's why I'm a prepper. I want every day to be the best possible day I can have. If you enjoyed my video, I hope you'll share it with someone else you think might like it. Please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel.